Hey everyone, Mark Roberti here. Before we get into this episode, I just want to address the fact that sometimes we can have a bad day and part of having bad days is figuring out how do we respond to them? How do we turn those into good days and learn from them? Well, one of my friends came out with a book, Gypsy Energy Secrets, which details how you can turn a bad day into a good day no matter what life throws at you. This is a very valuable skill for anyone who is just looking to get through some of the bumps, especially since we are in a new year, there are going to be bumps that come our way. Gypsy Energy Secrets will help you with being able to overcome some of the bad days and turn them into good ones. The book is available on Amazon and will be in the show notes. Anyways, let's get right into the episode. What's up, Breakthrough Success listeners? Mark Burry, the podcast coach here, helping people launch, grow, and monetize their podcasts. And when we think about monetizing, we think about all these different ways of making income. And it's amazing how many of them there are, but one of the sources of income that has proved itself throughout history time and time again for uh, centuries, and even more than that, really, uh, is real estate. So if you want to figure out how do you get rich in real estate, well, we have a really awesome guest for you. Uh, he is the founder and managing director of Broadway Realty, a real estate brokerage in Manhattan. And with over 20 years of experience, our guest has sold over $2 billion in New York real estate. That's with a B, $2 billion, we'll say it again, $2 billion in New York real estate. So our guest, who has this experience, is on the show to teach us how to get rich in real estate. So he is none other than Elliot Bogard. Elliot, welcome to the show. Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me on your show. And hello to all your listeners. Elliot, thank you so much for coming on Breakthrough Success. I feel like it's going to be a really awesome conversation because for someone who's achieved as much success as you in real estate, helping people get rich in real estate, uh, I feel like a lot of people are going to be impacted by this. So I'm wondering if we could just kick things off by sharing like uh, no one really starts with all this real estate knowledge. So how did you develop the real estate knowledge and get to where you are? Um. Mark, I started working for a commercial real estate company here in Manhattan, and I worked for about two years, and then I opened my own company, which is called Broadway Realty. I'm the founder of Broadway Realty, and ever since, I started doing retail offices. I do some residential business, investment properties for me and my clients, my investors. And it's interesting, I mean, from that starting point, it's, you've been able to grow to the level that you're at now. And part of that has really been dissecting some of these really big time real estate uh, properties and making all these big deals. And one of the things you hear in real estate very often is location, location, location. So uh, how do we evaluate the locations for investors? We want to make sure you know, we're not investing in a bad area and that we're investing in the best area. Yes, that's uh, one important uh, thing to know about your location. I always tell my clients, my investors, and I do it myself. I go to the location and I look at the neighborhood uh, during daytime, nighttime, during weekdays and weekends. You want to know all about your neighbors. You, you want to know about the points of interest, you know, you want to know about uh, transportation, how is it uh, the commute. Um, so this is really important. And trendy neighborhoods, uh, what's making them trendy, what is the expectations for the neighborhood, what is the neighboring properties, uh, that's all important. And I mean, it's definitely work, but at the same time, if you want to get a big return and you want to achieve a lot of success in real estate, you do have to put in the work. Some people say that, you know, uh, we're in the 21st century, we've got digital. I could just do a Google search on the neighborhood, do a Google search to see like what properties are nearby. Uh, for those people, like, what do you think? Uh, do you think that's okay now in this digital age or do you think you're missing out on a big segment just by relying on digital and not visiting the area? Uh, you know, it's another good question. Uh, I would first, of course, look at the neighborhoods, look at the, at the Google map and to see how it looks from up there. 
from out of space, but you actually investing in a real property and you would like to come and see it in person and spend some time there. So it always comes to basics. You come, you observe, you ask questions, um, you looked at the stores, restaurants, uh, you spend some time there, you understand dynamics of the neighborhood and you do it in person. I love that answer because I feel like people who are new to real estate can think that, and I'm sort of speaking as myself also because I want to get into it, but I reads is like the way I'm in it right now. But uh, like if you look at the Google map, you can look at it. It looks nice. And you know, you think that's the place you want to get. But I feel like what Elliot's emphasizing here is Google maps is good, but it's more of like a process of elimination. So like you could eliminate the bad stuff right away. And if something looks good on Google maps, that's an area where, Oh, I should visit it to see if this is something good instead of just looking at what Google maps gives you, what crime rate and stuff like that you find online by searching those things and just use that as process of elimination for places that you should consider and then visit those places uh, that are on your short list. Absolutely, Mark. Um, as an example, I can give you one neighborhood here in New York City, and it's amazing neighborhood. Uh, it's called Hudson Yards. Uh, Hudson Yards became a, a new neighborhood in the city, and it's hard to believe uh, how much was done. And the developer related group uh, made an, uh, a whole new neighborhood and it's neighborhood like no other. So I enjoyed it visiting myself not so long ago and uh, compared to what it was in two years. I don't know what Google map would show in today's uh, uh, current maps, but it changed completely in about uh, last two, three years. And that's another thing. Like sometimes a neighborhood could change so much in just a short amount of time. Uh, so it is good to visit those areas that, I mean, when it comes to real estate, uh, we may not be talking about $2 billion in deals as Elliot's done, but I mean, to buy a house, start a family, I mean, you could argue that that's an even bigger investment because that's what you're going to do for the rest of your life. And if you mess up where you live and you're not comfortable with where you live, like, you know, you've got the happiness factor. Uh, so it is really good to realize that areas do change very quickly and just to stay up with the time. So I definitely like that um, mentality. Uh, I know that the, the, the residential investments you like, they're condos, co-ops, and townhouses. Uh, I'm wondering if you could just share with us some of the differences between those and just like your investing strategies for those. Yes, Mark. Uh, so there is a lot of... Um real estate um, types in uh, Manhattan and uh, in other neighborhoods and uh, in another, uh, other parts of the country. But here in, uh, in the city, and I'm speaking from the experience that I'm doing it over 22 years now, so uh, you have your condos, which is the big... Uh, um, a uh, big part of the, and it's over 90,000 condominium apartments today in, in New York City. Uh, you have your co-ops, which is even bigger uh, part of the market, and you have your rental apartments, you have your townhouses, which is only five, 6,000 townhouses in, a, in New York. And uh, all of them are different, all of them are different uh, tax classes, and I describe them uh, in my book, uh, it's called uh, Get Rich in Real Estate. It will tell you all about the, uh, those classes, all about the markets, and markets are changing rapidly. So if your listeners would like to get the book, it's available on Amazon, Get Rich in Real Estate, and uh, they will know more from the book. Yeah, so we'll definitely drop that in the show notes in the description. Uh, depending on where you're looking at, it'll have a different name. But yeah, get rich in real estate. I mean, if you like this interview, we still got more to cover, obviously. But you know, if you're liking this vibe and you like Elliot and you like the knowledge he has, I definitely do recommend you uh, do pick up your copy. Uh, one of the things that um, I mean, with the two billion, like even with someone who's like 
anyone in real estate who has bought properties and achieved success, uh, it's almost never just one individual. It's usually a team behind that person. And uh, with real estate, I see some people having this uh, mindset where uh, people are out trying to squeeze out as much money from you as possible. So uh, how can we like find great people for our team who are trustworthy and who uh, will help us with our real estate ambitions? Mark, uh, real estate is very ethical, ethical uh, business and uh, first thing you go when you go into real estate and uh, uh, we are members of Real Estate Board of New York. They make you take ethics course. So that's uh, all about ethics. And uh, when you know your team, and you, part of your team is the attorneys, uh, accountants, um, title companies, insurance brokers. This is all people that you work with. And every day you have your uh, issues. You have your um, uh, things that are uh, happening and you have to talk to them and they are professionals who are around you and you have to, to know all these things and it's really important to uh, cover them. Uh, I'm talking about those things in my book as well and uh, this is something for your listeners to know. And I mean, it's good that you point out like, you know, you need accountants, you need all these different people to help you with the real estate. And especially if you want to branch out with this thing, like some people, they decide to buy hundreds of uh, properties and you can't manage all that. Other people, they're just happy with like two, three, four, five that bring in passive income. So it definitely depends on uh, what kinds of real estate setup you want to have. One of the questions I do want to ask you though is, um, with the success you've had, I feel like we're all built on habits. So I'm wondering if you could share with us some of the habits that have been really essential for your success. So one of the important habits is you come to work every day and this is your work. It's not a habit, but uh, you go to meetings, you talk to people, you ask questions. It all uh, uh, starts with one property your first property that you own and it's really important it doesn't matter if you own one property or 10 or 100 you want to be successful with that particular piece of property and you have to know it rents it sells or it refinances uh, so all the aspects all the it's all a process and you have to be your hobby and your work has to be around that uh, to make sure that you run your property successfully. And I mean, we did hit on like, you know, if you have one property, 10 or a hundred properties, you still want that your next property to do well. It's not like you get a hundred properties. It's like, ah, oh, the hundred first one, I don't care about that one. Like you still want all of your properties to be successful and produce money, obviously. But I feel like one of the things that may hit home with a lot of people is uh, they may want to get into real estate or they may have like a, uh, a little bit in real estate, but they may still have a job and they may want to use the wealth that real estate can provide to replace their income. So uh, how do you suggest people build up to that point? Um, so one important aspect of real estate ownership is passive income. So your property should generate a solid income and you should always think about ways to keep up to increase value, but you don't forget about the fundamentals. Fundamental is the rent roll and your passive income that property generates. And as long as your property generates income, it will go through all the cycles. Uh, it's a lot of cycles in your markets, in any markets. Uh, and in New York, every three to five years, we experience uh, uh, price increases, price decreases, it becomes buyer's market, seller's market. So all those fluctuations, uh, it's important to know that if you get your passive income and if you get your rent roll, it's you, you'll manage to get through all the cycles. And that, that is a really amazing point because I feel like there are, there are a lot of people who I've had on Breakthrough Success, they'll say I got started in real estate in 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006. 
And then they talked about 2008 is this year that really destroyed them. Uh, but if you focus on just being able to continue generating income from your real estate and you have that mentality and you look at the fundamentals, then you are prepared for any kind of uh, market cycle that can come your way because uh, prices don't go up forever. Prices don't go down forever. Uh, but, you know, fundamentals and stuff like that is really uh, important, as Elliot mentioned, for making sure you ride those different cycles. Absolutely, Mark. Uh, so we saw very good market between 2002 and 2007. That was a golden age of the um, construction. And uh, uh, we saw the great market uh, for condos. But they all sold and uh, people received mortgages and it was a great market to sell and buy. And uh, we saw not so good market. Uh, that was a crisis of uh, Lehman Brothers in 2008, 2009. Between 2009 and 2011, we didn't have uh, a lot of transactions. Um, and then again, from 2000. 12 to 2015, uh, we had a very strong uh, seller's market, and now we are back to buyer's market. It's a soft market, and it's good to buy again. So that's what we see in the last uh, decades. And through all those ups and downs, I mean, this definitely comes from experience of investing, but I feel like that's not, that's not enough for this uh, question. But uh, how do you ride those ups and downs mentally like how do you stay mentally strong because there are some people who they'll buy at you know they'll buy a 2006 and then they'll sell a 2008 because they just don't, they just don't want to lose more than what they've already lost so how do you stay mentally strong through a cycle when you've just bought a property and you can see it go down very quickly in value uh for that short term uh, mark it's important to know that uh, any, any cycle will uh, come to an end and it will change and the market will change. So when you cannot sell your property, consider other options. Other options are you rent it, you refinance it, you take a partner, you do a joint venture. So there is a lot of ways by running a business and uh, you take advantage of all that is offered to you you always have options. I love that. You always have options uh, when it comes to real estate investing, when it comes to podcasting, when it comes to anything it is that you're doing. I love that you always have options. Great way, great ending message. Uh, for people who want to learn more about Elliot, we will be including a link to his book, Get Rich in Real Estate. Are there any other good places where we can learn more about what you're doing? Yes, Mark. So I have my social media which is YouTube channel, uh, Twitter, I'm also on Instagram, uh, Facebook. My company is Broadway Realty. So if, my, if your listeners would like to connect with me, uh, they can connect with Broadway Realty on different channels, such as all the social media. Well, Elliot, we'll make sure we include all of those links in the show notes for listeners to follow your work. I uh, will also include a link for a strategy call with me to see if you need help with your podcast or YouTube, or if you want to become a best selling author, we've got uh, you know a bunch of different ways that we can help you. So we'll include that strategy link as well for all the listeners. But once again, Elliot, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was such a pleasure having you on Breakthrough Success. You're welcome, Mark. And thank you and good luck with the show. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye.